Radio Relay International's second quarter 2022 exercise has just completed. Along with RRI and the National Traffic System Traffic Nets, we had DOD, uh, Mars Region 2 players. We also had agencies that respond to emergencies and disasters that had participants. All right, let's get on with the hot wash. Stick around. Black one, black one. So what is this exercise? It is an exercise of a system infrastructure for being able to relay messages from one station to another. This is a critical component of emergency communication planning because it's not always possible, even for radio stations, to establish contact directly with one another. Sometimes, for whatever reason, there needs to be intermediaries to be able to service those messages to relay between them. We've talked about this system of message relay in Radio KD8 TTE Episode 8, as well as some others. We'll provide a card that will link to Episode 8. So, who is exercising and why? Radio Relay International is hosting the exercise. Mars Region 2 and NTS are participating, as well as several agencies from states around the country. The goal generally is to test interoperability. We want to make sure that Army Mars Region 2 is able to use the RRI and NTS infrastructure, including that last mile. That is to say, the operators who are going to be the direct front line to the agencies that need to be able to use the system, as opposed to those that are at the core of the system and are handling all of the relay of the messages. What that means is that we're focusing on the delivery of messages from the system as well as origination of messages from agency personnel into the system. So the scenario is the same as the DOD COMEX 22-2. The idea is for DOD to be able to gather ground truth information, in this case to be able to talk to agencies, to get information from agencies that will be able to provide information that can be used in planning to support civil authority in the aftermath of a disaster of some sort. This is a compliment to the DoD COMEX 22-2 that we covered in this channel uh, pretty extensively. So we're talking about indirect messaging by relay. So how did the play work? Well, agencies had personnel that were already ahead of the exercise uh, read into what was going on. They volunteered to participate. They were registered with RRI for the Mars stations to be able to target when those messages needed to be sent. The personnel at the agencies would then follow the instructions for the messages as well as other players. The players being the traffic operators, those who handle the messages. Instructions included for the messages to be delivered in the structure of the Incident Command System Form 213. That's structure. Originating messages would take place uh, by the radio operator again on behalf of the agency when sending a response. And to be able to make that work, the idea was to use RRI's radiogram ICS-213. So let's have a look from DOD to the agencies. DOD network would have an inquiry message and it would then be transferred to the digital traffic net gateway. A digital traffic station transfers to a state or local net and that goes to a last mile delivering station operator. That is somebody who can interface directly with the agency. Then that last mile operator would deliver the message using the RRI form 1703. That's the RRI radiogram ICS-213. So from the agencies back to DOD. We have the agency message wrapped in the radiogram ICS-213 that would allow it to be relayed from one station to another reliably. It would go from the RRI or NTS state or local net to transfer to a digital traffic station. That is somebody who is able to receive the message over whatever manual net or however it was received. The digital traffic station would then transfer that injected into the digital traffic net. 
the digital traffic net target station would receive it and then gateway further to Mars. So at this point, it would go to an operator who is able to receive from DTN and is able then to route via Mars to deliver via that military auxiliary radio system. The reply would then be verified, and the last mile operator would send copies of the messages that they've handled to the RRI, Emergency Management Director, for analysis and being able to measure how accurate the messages were being handled. So how did we do? From our position, I was just a player in the exercise, so I'm not able to see overall how things were going, but from where I sit, I can make a few observations. So we're going to watch for RRI's analysis and report. It's going to take some time to compile all of that stuff. So what we're doing here today is a hot wash, just some first observations. So let's take a look at some of the things that I saw. We'll take a look at a quick sample of how I was receiving messages as a radio operator off of those manual traffic nets and then the delivery that I made, how I did the origination back. And we're going to take a look at another example. After we've seen those two, we'll compare it with the six goals of the exercise. So for our first example, we're going to have a look at one where I handled the message as a radio operator who knew that the exercise was going on and had the instructions on how to handle the message. So let's take a look at the message that I received as I got it from the Ohio Single Sideband Net, a manual voice mode traffic. Net. Kilo Bravo 8 Golf Uniform November. This is Kilo Delta 8 Tango Tango Echo. Ah, oh, there he is. Uh, this is KDA TTE. You are uh, good readable. I am ready. Uh, number one, zero, two, three, two, Lima, Alpha, X-ray. Uh, this is figure zero, but I know that's not correct. Uh, Oakland. Roger, 102. Once I had the message, I was preparing it for delivery within the parameters of the exercise using the RRI form 1703 ICS. That is an ICS 213 with some extra stuff on there to be able to support relay by radio and to have the accountability needed for uh, handling by multiple operators. We can see that I took that, I formatted it in the message uh, form. That's an, a PDF form that I actually filled all the components out. You'll see that the check uh, as it came through was problematic. Uh, so I made the correction and we have that in there. You'll notice that when we go down to the text, the body portion of the message, we actually have uh, nine groups. And that's because I turned the query word at the end into a question mark. So I'm sending this to an agency person. This isn't somebody who necessarily understands what radio messages are or what a radiogram is or how to handle it. So I try to make this look as normal as possible. It does come in all capital letters. That was part of the uh, exercise parameters to make sure that there was a clue for the recipient that there isn't an ability to distinguish between uppercase and lowercase on the circuit, the kind of thing that we would have if relayed by voice. The recipient then acted on the message and created a response. That response, again, following the parameters of the exercise, was in that same RRI form 1703 ICS. The to, the from, and the text were populated. 
the remainder was left blank. That's all radio operator stuff, and the person at the agency doesn't need to know about any of that, and it's certainly not their burden to take that on. If we are there to help them, we've got everything we need from them, from having to, from, and the text. From there, I, as a radio operator, format the message, complete what we had in the form, and then turn it into the radiogram necessary for transmission. And then I sent that to a digital traffic station that we had in Ohio participating in the exercise. So let's take a look at a second example where the last mile operator was unaware that an exercise was going on. So this is just our normal volunteer operation, just what happens day to day when a volunteer in the National Traffic System, or RRI, is just handling traffic. In this case, we had delivery via email. The message had uh, the recipient's phone number and email, but there were several messages, so this operator chose to send them all in one email message. The email message had a little bit of an introduction and then the radiograms followed. So there's a few things that we can see. Number one is the date on this. At 11.39 in the morning, that means that this was delivered in less than one hour after the start of the net. These messages were sitting on this operator's station for only a few minutes. That's very good. It's timely. Now, when we go into the text, we see I received the following radiograms. Again, to an agency person who might not be a radio operator or know anything about radio communication, the question might arise, well, what's a radiogram? Also, received this morning on the Ohio Single Sideband Net. Well, what's that? If you're not an amateur radio operator, if you're not operating in Ohio, you don't know what that is. And then 7-3, well, what's that? to a non-radio operator, it's unclear what's supposed to be done with that. Uh, in fact, radio operators understand that 7-3 is shorthand for best regards, but that's a sort of code that uh, is not comprehensible to a non-radio operator. Looking further down in the message, we see that delivery was made directly in the amateur radiogram format. A few interesting things about this. Uh, number one is that it's not ideal. This was not the intention of the exercise. So this would be some kind of a failure state, but it's not a bad failure state. It's comprehensible. We can still look at this and see what it is. There is also an obvious reply path. It came in via email. A response can be sent via email just as it came in, even though the text of the email message did not specifically say that you can route back through me. So one of the things that I notice is that we have handling instructions here. Handling instructions, Charlie. This requires that at delivery, we need to originate a message back to the station of origin to let them know that delivery has been made. So the question comes in, did the delivery station follow the delivery instruction? Well, we don't know that from our perspective, but it's a noteworthy question. Also, when taking a look at the address E, we can see we've got a name and we have a title and we have an organization name and so on, but the fourth civil support and SU, it looks to me like there's truncation here. I don't really know what happened, but my guess is that somebody was using RRI's fillable PDF form to put all of that information into the address E portion and simply ran out of space of what's visible on that PDF form. That meant truncation of the addressee. That's a problem, and if it is in fact a problem that comes from using the fillable PDF form, it's a very important finding. Now a feature of this exercise, a very good one, is that the agency recipients knew that these messages were coming in. So something like this, if sent just out of the blue, might be a cause for concern, might be confusing, might be ignored. On this operation, the agency personnel were aware these were coming. I briefed the agency personnel so that they would have instructions in order to participate, even if the delivering the last mile operator did not provide those instructions as indicated by the parameters of the exercise. So the agency member read the message, followed the instructions, and created a reply. 
Again, because he was briefed, he used the radiogram ICS-213 form, completed to, from, and the text, and then sent via email back to the station that sent the message in the first place. So did the last mile station know how to handle the reply? This was somebody who was apparently not aware that the exercise was going on. Uh, how did the uh, reply look when it was actually formatted and handled? We're just going to need to wait and see. That's a good part of the reason why we're exercising. So some things that we can see, it's pretty clear that not all traffic handlers got the message about the exercise and knew what to do with it. The delivery that we observed that was in radiogram format, it's not great, but it's not a disaster. It was timely, it was professional, it was accurate, it was courteous. All of those are good things. Something that I'd observe for exercise planners in the future is that the instruction for the origination of those messages in the first place could probably say use the op note so that the last mile operator would have a clue that there were some particular parameters for this and delivery by radiogram just wasn't going to uh, satisfy the requirements. So not everybody could make the two training sessions that were offered. Not everybody got the information about how to do the delivery. And that op note could have gone a long way to avoid having some of those uh, unaware operators just going about the business. Good news is that if you've been following here, you understand what the ICS-213 is and you understand that it can be encapsulated, it can be relayed through NTS and RRI circuits. It's not a new idea and it's one that we have practiced. So if we take a look at the six goals for the exercise, the first one, testing the message transfer from DoD Mars Region 2 into the RRI digital traffic net. That's not something that we've got visibility into from where I sit, so we're not going to comment on that. The second is to test the message transfer from the RRI digital traffic station gateway to the section nets and the local traffic nets. I didn't observe that directly either, so we're going to skip past that. What I did see at number three was to train the radio volunteers, and that was clearly something that didn't happen uniformly. Uh, we're going to have to wait for RRI's report to see how many participated and what that meant in terms of the uh, intention of the delivery uh, being followed. Number four, ensuring that the operators were providing the last mile delivery functions with the correct message forms. We got some variable performance on that. Again, some got the message, were able to follow. Others didn't get the message and did not follow. We want to ensure that the operators providing that last mile function can properly process and format and route reply messages. Uh, so it looked good from where I sat and I was able to see some of those things going back into the digital traffic station. We're just going to have to see how the performance went. So RRI's report again is going to be helpful for us. And finally, RRI is going to be measuring the accuracy of the network relay functions. We're just going to have to wait for their analysis. A few parting thoughts. The exercises exist to put us in scenarios that we should be able to handle. It helps us to see where things work and where they don't. We should not worry about making mistakes. We're going to make them. That's the whole point of going through these exercises is that we bump into the problems where maybe a procedure is incomplete. Maybe there's a problem with the instructions. Maybe the training is lacking. Uh, maybe what we're trying to do is too many steps ahead from where people are and we need to break the training steps down into smaller steps. In any case, we can look back at what we did, and this is an important thing. We can't just operate in the exercise, forget all about it, and then try it again in the next exercise. We have to look back at our performance, evaluate our performance, see where we made mistakes so we don't keep making them. We are going to learn from our mistakes if we look back, see the mistakes, and see what we should have done instead. If we learn those lessons, we are going to be better operators and the system that we operate in is going to be more viable. So if you found this helpful, please subscribe to the channel, share it with others, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. This is Radio KD8TTE, 